welcome down the rabbit hole friends we are moving through these kate goslin chapters all about a b u s e at lightning speed so hoffman makes us aware that there were many people within the home who saw and recounted stories of the children being treated inappropriately with lots of spankings and yelling one source even said that they watched as Kate kicked a Lego building the boys made and smashed it into a million pieces because they didn't put it away the first time she asked them to. These sources have said that the kids were afraid of Kate. All she has to do is look at them and they get scared of her because they know what she'll do to them, Hoffman writes. She's completely different from what you see on TLC. She's always yelling at them, and that's one of the reasons why they split up, the source claims. John was always the fun parent while Kate was the mean one. John would let them have fun and make a mess while Kate wanted everything to be neat and tidy. She would get mad at them for getting their toys out to play with. We've seen that before, and I have no doubt that the kids are like super bored um, when they have to live with Kate. Now, really recently, and I hate to say this because it's not like I'm the most active, best like exercising parent in the world, but I've seen the kids, like all of the sex tuplets now that they're older and the ones that are living with Kate, several of them are like very um, overweight. I'm not judging that. I just kind of wonder if that wouldn't be part of like Kate's whole spiel where like they just stay in and hang out with each other all day, every day with nothing like really to do unless it was going to get paid for by TLC. And now that they don't have that kind of money, it's like it wouldn't surprise me if a part if a part of what happened to this family is that they became really isolated and like shut-ins down in North Carolina. Another former neighbor that I spoke to several weeks ago told me that Kate was always screaming at the kids, even when they were very small. She would run the house like a military base, expecting the kids to jump whenever she yelled for them. I saw Kate spank the kids many times. She believed in old school discipline. If she said something and they didn't listen, they would get spanked. It got to the point that the kids would cower when she yelled at them because they didn't know if they were going to get hit or not. The kids weren't the only ones being bullied by Kate because let's get real, John was also heavily targeted by his wife. Hoffman writes, Kate not only physically abuses her children, she, mo she emotionally abuses them as well, and then she criticizes John publicly every chance she gets in interviews and on TV. This is the father that they love, but she can't put aside her hate for him to try to take care of their emotional well-being. Only one can imagine the terrible things she says about him directly to the kids, if this is what she's willing to say out in public. Hoffman wants us to know that Kate has also accused John of like overly punishing the kids and Hoffman according to his research hasn't found any evidence that John did anything but kind of go along with what Kate wanted that he was the more fun parent the more loving parent but he did go along with what Kate required of him. Hoffman asked like who should have reported some of this like why wasn't TLC involved with letting CPS know what was going on with these kids I guess we'll never know for sure but I'm sure TLC would say they never saw anything inappropriate happen at the Goslin home Hoffman also acknowledges most of you will be asking, why didn't John Goslin report the abuse? Hoffman lets us know he doesn't know why. Only John can answer that question, but he does want us to know this. John had to sign an NDA with Discovery Entertainment. This contract forbids him from talking about things that go on in the house. Hoffman writes, that piece of paper should never have been anyone's excuse for not intervening if they saw or knew about the abuse happening. But he does want us to know that Kate also threatened John constantly with that contract, that he could get into a lot of trouble if he spoke out about certain things. John was scared. And I think he also wanted to do what was best for his kids, and he really wasn't even sure what was best, right? I think he's probably thinking to himself like, but also how if I like break down this TV show and get my kids out of there, like how am I going to be able to afford to pay for them? He seems like someone who was very unsure in his own decisions, especially when it came to fatherhood, unfortunately. 
this is really sad, but in August of 2010, there's a paparazzi video of John bringing the kids back to Kate's big, beautiful Pennsylvania mansion after his custody time. The kids are hysterical. They're screaming and crying about having to go back with mom, even though she had the swimming pool, she had the jacuzzi, she had the dogs, which they eventually sent back to the breeder. In the video, the kids are inconsolable, and John makes a lot of efforts to calm them down. He realizes that he's required to hand them over to Kate. According to Hoffman, it's one of the saddest things that he's ever seen. Now, Hoffman says he was in touch with John, like actually on this very day that all of this went down, because they were friendly and they were talking on a regular basis. Um, when he spoke to John, John let Hoffman know, like, I'm having a really hard time even getting the kids out of my apartment. They don't want to go home to Kate's house. They ended up arriving at Kate's like an hour late because everyone was crying and it was so hard to get them there. Hoffman says that it was actually him, Hoffman, who drove John and the kids because John was having such a hard time. He says that you can see him in the video. He's waiting for John when John gets back in the car. And it was a really sad time that John kind of broke down and cried. The next several sections are just all about how horrible Kate always was to John. In this paragraph, Hoffman writes, at the time of their divorce, when Kate was splitting time at the house with John, she would just leave a list of things for him to do. These were things that she was just too busy to do. Doctor's appointments, clothes shopping. Can you imagine? Like These are all the things that a mom does. She wanted him to fill up her gas tank, and she always left a long list. But one of the craziest, kind of sickest things that happened um, during this time that John has divulged to Hoffman is that Lexi had been complaining about being sick to Kate for over four days and Kate kept putting it off and said that John would take her to the doctor when he had his custody time. When John came into the house, he saw that Kate had left him a note to take her to the doctor and he did. Lexi was diagnosed with strep and she had a really high fever. John was really upset about it because he's like, this girl has been sick for several days and her throat is really hurting. Why couldn't Kate just take her to the doctor? John and Hoffman seem to think that Kate never prioritized really taking care of the kid's needs, like medical appointments. John reported that during those four days that Lexi was sick, Kate went to the tanning salon numerous times, got her nails done, and made countless trips to all without any children coming along to bother her, so she must have had babysitters at the house. Instead of being at home with the kids, John alleges that Kate f manages to fill her days with running errands by herself, and the kids will stay behind with the babysitter or nanny. If she truly enjoyed spending time with the children, why wouldn't she cut some of those things out or have the nannies do it for them? And this is a big part of how the show misleads us. Kate was not an active parent. The next section, um, I thought it was kind of funny, although it's sad. It is exactly what I would expect from Kate Goslin. It's called Who Gets the Broken Lollipop? So in the summer of 2010, Kate and the kids, they were filming in New York for Kate Plus 8. Now this didn't make it to the, re the regular episode, but they did these like web episodes on the side and that's where Hoffman saw it. And the web episode is called Lollipops and basically Kate goes to the Statue of Liberty and gets the kids a whole bunch of Statue of Liberty lollipops. She starts opening them and handing them out and one of the lollipops breaks. So Hoffman just points out that in the web episode or webisode, Kate takes the broken lollipop and like gives it right to one of the kids to ensure that she gets a lollipop that is not broken because <laughs> she also got one for herself. So he just says like, what mother, if you really look at this episode, like what mother in the world wouldn't have been like, oh, I'll take the broken one. Only one of them broke, but Kate <laughs> made sure that she got one that was intact. Is it just me or does that completely sum up who Kate Goslin is? She has to have the perfect, non-broken, intact Statue of Liberty lollipop while a small, tiny child falls to the ground crying silently. Just a tiny little tear. Probably Colin was the one who got the broken one. Tiny little tear running down his face, but he knows that he'll be spanked if he actually says anything. You know, his heart is broken, but Kate's just like, Mmm, some good Statue of Liberty. 
Okay, of course it's here. I need to take a break because I'm having some technical difficulties. That's why my hair is suddenly up because I'm getting into it trying to fix my computer. Thank you for being here with me today. I hope you join me tomorrow as we head down another rabbit hole.